No. We, we are cast No. It was a damn song. Oh, Do my head in there. Ahoy. We are castaways. No. We're stuck where we are. My lord. We definitely are, Dakota. Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to today's podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Dakota. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have the two other kind of like on and off guests. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Melissa. Yo, I'm Caitlin. Yes, yeah, so we have the whole crew finally doing kind of a just voice podcast. So I'm going to do more of the deep question starters, which is from For Your Eyes on TikTok. So thank you for that. And we're going to start with the first one just straight off the bat, which is, if you could say anything to the person who hurt you the most, what would you say? (laughs) (laughs) Y'all can go as much as you want. I don't, you can say whatever you want. There is no issues. Fuck off. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can say anything. What would you say? Why are y'all looking at me? (laughs) You're sitting in front of me. (laughs) Words could not describe um mm, well i don't know like i feel like yeah see this is like really hard because it's like oh okay like i get that opportunity kind of thing yeah you know what i mean like so you get the option for them to just kind of (laughs) sit down shut up be quiet they have to listen to what you say you know what would it be i would just crack out the i'm disappointed in you But even then, it feels like they're getting off lightly. Yeah, but like I don't want to say what I... justify. I don't want to say what I really want to say over a yeah. podcast. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Oh, that's a fair point. Mm. But the word disappointment speaks levels to me. Like, personally, I feel like I'd rather have someone say, I'm, like, I hate you, rather than I'm disappointed in you. Because yeah. it literally feels like you're inferior and insignificant to them, so... Very different impact two different words yeah it's definitely. almost like you can imagine like you know your mom or dad like putting their hand on the shoulder and giving you the like head tilt being like i'm disappointed in you yeah like, oh, see, when i hear the word disappointed i think of my dad and like he's only used that once and i like cried for so long yeah, it, it's such an impactful word as well because like even if it, like i don't know for like it doesn't even have to be like family it can even be like from a friend yeah so it, it has such an impact because you can't do anything about it or you don't know what like what specifically you've disappointed them about. So I think it's the scary thing of like not knowing. Yeah. Because it's almost feeling like accountable as well for that. Like, you know how it's like, okay, how do I make it better? But at the same time, it's like, what did I do? Yeah, it's a big old question mark. And it's like, why did you give this to me? I think for me, oh, so many things I would say. (laughs) But (laughs) I think I would just like, if I had the option, like sit down and just be like, why did you think what you did was necessary? You had no reason to, but you did it anyway. Mm-hmm. Out of fear, I don't know, but you know, you s- oh, I'm choking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Spit. Mm-hmm. But you know, like you know, you said what you said. You did what you did. I don't want apologies for that because that's useless. I just want to know more in the sense of why did you think it was practical to do it, and you knew you were doing it and getting away with it. Mm. Like, you know, why do you think it was okay to lie? And even when you were called out on it, you're like, no, it's, it was perfectly fine. What told you that was okay? Yeah. Things like that. So it was more of, because I'm a person of curiosity. Yeah. Like, you could, like, you know, mm. tear me apart. I'd still be like, so why did you choose that method? Yeah. yeah. Please tell me. It's like, what is justified for you to think that way? Yeah. Mm. See, mine's kind of like, either who hurt you or what was your trauma to put that on me then? Yeah. And that's the kind of like, what did you go through to do that to me to then put me in a worse situation to better yourself? Yeah. Like, that's fucked. Yeah. Without like saying too much details at the moment, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like for the particular person I have in my head, they were like, oh, I don't want to be as bad as one of their parents. I'm like, cool, you are worse than their parent though. You did. Almost Wait, let's things. call him Jeff. <laughs> uh, okay. Jeff oh, from the Wiggles? <laughs> oh, no, Jeff from the Wiggles is too pure. He is. That man can take as many naps as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, it's interesting to kind of see like, oh, okay. You know, when people say certain things and then they flip or just the constant like, 
almost bipolar switches is really fascinating to me. Yeah, so, yeah, because uh, there's, there's mainly, oh, other than family, there's mainly two people that have really impacted me and my life and my mental state. One, let's say it's, um, uh, uh, Timothy, okay. and the other one is... Albedo, my brain went. As soon as you said corn, as soon as you said Timothy, my brain went to Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Albedo, I'm just, I'm just giving some names yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But they had really fucked up my self confidence and my outlook on just like my future and my my. I'd say my love life. Yeah. Because I always picture myself with someone, whether it's you know something I want to like have for like 50 odd years or you know 20 odd years i don't know that but now i'm like so unsure and almost it's harder to get back into that because that com that commitment now it's the the four years that i put into that mm. turned into what i got now it's like at the end the quote unquote heartbreak wasn't bad i was already so emotionally detached from them yeah mm. that i was like you know what yeah you're fucking nothing mm. But you fucked me up. It was the aftermath that was more upsetting than the actual. No, doing for thing. me it was during. Oh. It was. The, it wasn't the beginning. The beginning was amazing. The ending was, eh, whatever. Fucking hell! Like cried for two days. That's it. Yeah. It's not like the four because it's four years. Yeah. Sure. During that middle time where the cheating would happen, and just the infidelity, like all of that going behind my back and just being an actual see you next Tuesday. Hmm. <laughs> So is that so funny? Yeah. <laughs> that there That's is what fucked uh, me up more. Sorry, she just got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what fucked me up more than anything than the after. Because hmm. the after, I learned to better myself and yeah. you know different outlooks. I learned from that experience, and then obviously I didn't because Timothy came along, <laughs> and that like what two months that he was on scene, not together, but you know seeing each yeah. other sort of thing. Mm. I swear, he fucked me up like the worst. He was interesting. Oh. To be polite. Timothy was... I, I didn't like him straight a away. A narcissistic prick. He, he was just uncomfortable. I don't know. He was. I Because at the beginning, he was so well-rounded. Mm. You know, he had some of the things I was looking for, but I also was kind of... He wasn't a rebound, but he was like kind of the just past rebound. Yeah. Nothing serious, but like, hey, you know... The interesting that, the fact that he told me that you guys met in high school which was a complete lie what i told you this no oh, he told me that you guys met in high school and i knew are you kidding me yeah. i mean you would have mentioned it even if like just introducing and stuff it's yeah like, oh, i would have said oh we were acquaintances or like we went to the same high school yeah, yeah. i actually did not mm -hmm. know that oh no yeah it was like when we were in Kmart, he mentioned it to me. Uh, Kmart, that <laughs> yeah. was the shittest experience. I don't people. know what happened because I think, what, did I go off with you, Dakota, for a little no, bit? No, no, you, you went off to look for a particular pair of shoes. By yeah. yourself. And it was just us. <gasps> That's right. Yeah. I was looking for a pair of shoes. Yeah. And, oh yeah, I left you guys alone with him. Fuck. <laughs> I, I really remember that because at the time I had... Jeff, whatever, cool. The, like, X is my Jeff. background, and he was like, Oh, who's that? I'm like, Oh, that's my boyfriend. He's like, But why? What's the, what's the point of that? And I'm like, oh I'm like, I know, that's, I think that when he said that comment is when I came back into it, and yeah. like, after yeah. that, you kind of said that, and I was like, What the fuck? He Sorry. Brought, he brought up a touchy, I won't go into it, but he yeah. brought up a touchy mm. subject for us, and we we're just like, Yeah. He, he doesn't know when, like, cues, you know what I mean? He doesn't know when they're, like, when, obviously, we weren't close enough. No. To un know him or know how he goes about them questions. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. the way he said it was not right. Yeah. But it's yeah. because of we literally like just met him, so it wasn't yeah it wasn't planned well. It was something you don't usually ask. Um, but yeah, it was just it wasn't really right. No, because I knew he had um, some social anxiety and he had all of that and like past shit as well. But he was getting better is what he told me mm. so then obviously i asked you guys hey can i bring him along so you guys yeah. can, you know yeah. essentially for me it's like can you guys get a feel for him yeah and then afterwards it was like a round of mm, well mm, and i was kind of like okay yeah so starting to backpedal and like look at things from a you know a wider yeah, perspective see, like red flags and stuff like that kind yeah. of yeah 
No worries, I've got him fired from his job, so that's a bit, that's a bit of payback. Um, I don't understand, he was bagging our boss. I don't know. To a, not, well, not only to me, but to a colleague. I feel like some people think they can do that because it's like, oh, I can get away with it. And because, you know, it's like between friends or colleagues. Like, even if that's the yeah. case, you, there's still some degrees you shouldn't do stuff. Yeah, because that, she was my mother's friend. Yeah. And that there, that means she's like, uh, she's not like an auntie, but like, she's like, I would call it, classify her as my mother's friend, but I'm very family close friend? with her still. What one? Family friend? Uh, no, mother's friend. <laughs> I, don't know. I get the same things like uh, I had someone try to do that at work and like my boss is my cousin who I'm really close with and I was like <laughs> you're gonna stop right there I was like this is the only time I'm gonna play this card but I'm related to her so please please don't say stuff I don't want to hear yeah. I said I'm yeah. happy if it's actual like decent feedback or things that can be improved on makes sense but if you're gonna start talking about their personalities or who they are that's why I'm gonna say no and walk off because yeah. I don't like that. There's like, a certain point to like, you know, you're allowed to like vent about a person, but in like there's a fine line between venting and then just <laughs> shit taking. Yeah, like when he had literally bagged my mother to me. Yeah, no, nah, like that. Like obviously I ran because it's my it's my mother. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you've got a relationship with her that only you understand. Yeah, so her and I we have quarrels, we have arguments, and at the same time. She's one of the most loving people in the world to me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> that's the thing. It's a give and take type of relationship. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's the thing. That's my mom. Mm. You cannot call her a low functioning sociopath to me. You know what? If you said it behind my back and I didn't know about it, look, I, if I didn't know, yeah. I wouldn't care. Yeah. But you said it to me. Yeah. And as much as I have issues with my mom and I love her to bits, you do not say that to me because it's blood. That the, that one birthed me. Yeah, that one yeah. ejected me out of her body. Well, no, I, I actually wore her as a hat. I got uh, cut oh. out of her stomach, so cesarean, but I came out ass first, then feet, and then they pulled my head out, so I wore my mother as a hat. That's nice. <laughs> anyway, but circling back to that question, I guess to Albedo, we'll call mm-hmm. him, yeah, it's more of where is your life now compared to mine? It's a bit of a comparison because I would be put down with him so much yeah. that now I'm like in this high-end job, my schooling's almost over, I'm earning a hell of a lot of cash, and I'm getting my shit together, mm. whereas he's just, you know, nightclub, drugs, party, smoking, all like, for me, all the bad shit that really has an impact, or sometimes a negative impact on your life. But that there, like, look how deteriorated you are compared to me. Yeah. And then with Timothy, it's like, look at you now. This is what it would get you. You can't keep doing that shit because he's... I won't get into that, but he has yeah. cases against him. Legal cases. <laughs> mm. And it's like, look what your actions have done. Do you understand what you've done? Oh, I don't even think... I don't even want them to understand they should understand, but yeah. it's the fact that it's like, this is your life. You will die with all these things attached to you. Yeah, like, I think the thing about this kind of stuff is that every person is inflicted by another. So even the worst person that you know is inflicted by something. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, that's how, quote unquote, villains come up. You know, something has happened to them for them to do what they do. They want justice for themselves. Yeah, but th- <laughs> it's... Obviously, it's not a good thing and, you know, you would never want that to happen to you, but it can also, like, be that might only be what they know. They don't know how to go about it. Maybe they've experienced something that we don't know, but it's because of that that we and they don't understand. And then it just becomes a constant circle of, well, you're an asshole. You're treating me bad and kind of... Yeah, and then you start reflecting that onto them as well. Yeah, you know, like, I'm not justifying, like, bullies and stuff like that but at the end of the day something could have happened to them to inflict that on others yeah Yeah. well sometimes they were just brought up that way and they don't know any other way yeah someone i know was similar like they were brought up in the way of pretty much they were told to basically lie to everyone and met like they didn't know what the truth meant or what the word even meant yeah and so it was constantly just okay lie people you know cheating games if you don't win just cry yeah, because then people will automatically be like, "Oh no, no, have it, it's fine." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, they've only just realized now, at the age of like you know, twenty-two, mm. 
you can't do that. No. That doesn't work. Yeah. As well as this. It's, it still it's, works. It's, oh, yeah. always, it's the people that are around that will, like, let that go to an extent. But mm. it, for me, it depends on the age and the learning experience. If, look, hypothetically, if it's a game and it's not going to, like, kill them, I'd be like, oh, no, it's all good. Yeah. You won. But if it's something that's, like, going to impact maybe their outlook or even how they would start to think mentally and solve mm. problems... It's kind of like, no, you need to understand the world isn't like that. As much as you want to cry and throw a tantrum, it's that's not how you're going to get it. Everyone's just going to push you aside and say, well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> the joys of life, man. Mm. There's so many ways to screw up a human. It's kind of sad when you think about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what's your little, little <laughs> phrase that you'd say to the person? Oh. Yeah, exactly back to the question. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we just like decluttered like everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I. When it comes to that kind of stuff, I tend to like. I like to forget about it because I don't see a reason to dwell on the past. Mm. If someone hurt me saying you're right, I don't tend to think about it as much because I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Mm. You hurt me, so I don't really give a shit on how your life is or how my life yeah, is. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm, I'm just a particular person where it's like I don't care yeah nonchalant sort of yeah thing. like there are certain per- people who have hurt me in my life and I would be like oh fuck off or something. yeah yeah but just like if you could really let it out yeah mm-hmm. like to even if it's like you know friends family or those other people what yeah. was the what's the main kicker you want to say like or even a topic that you'd be like you know what? You're wrong. I'm right. Fuck yeah. you. It is hard with wogs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So you can't win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. That's like, true. Yeah, because like, yeah, it's just like you try to win an argument. It's just like no, they're right. And just like okay, I tap tap out. Yeah, because they're just gonna start going in circles. Yeah. And then somehow food and wine comes into it, and then you just give up there and you just go. Yeah. Alcoholics come like out. You come back into the room like, are you hungry? Yeah. You want to go get food? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Good <laughs> you always know it's good is when food gets brought up. Yeah. That's when you're like, okay, coast is clear. Hello. Mm. <laughs> can, I, can I come out to the closet? Yeah. <laughs> or they come into your room like, I made pasta bake. Would you like some? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they come in bake. offering yeah. food. Yeah, that's true though. <laughs> this one might be, I'm curious what you guys are going to say, but... How many religions do you think were lost over time? <laughs> oh. Which one of them was right? So that's in quotation marks. Uh, I don't even know how to answer this. <laughs> oh, I, this this kind of touches base where I I kind of love dealt like diving into these sort of things. I'm not good with like some of the terminology, but you know, so you got your uh, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, all of that, like, all of their culture, like their like fucking base, yeah, is founded upon. So it's hard to explain. It's perfection, understanding, knowledge. It, it's insane. For me, I like to look into Egypt Egyptology. Yeah. Yeah. But looking at how structured and if you think out of it statistically, the pyramids. Mm-hmm. You cannot fit a single piece of paper between any of those uh, limestones that make up the pyramid. Yeah. To have that kind of perf- perfect calculation in such what I would say little time for back in that day, the manpower obviously was insane. Yeah, they got like so many people to do it. it yeah, unfortunately, lives lost. That was the time, but the clean, like, I don't understand how clean those lines could be. Even with the technology we have today, we cannot get, we cannot cut through limestone so fucking perfectly. Yeah, I am curious as to how they do that. So, like, having that kind of thing, you'd think outside of that, what was the influence to have, or what was the other, like, ideal? Outsider, mm-hmm. without going to, like, oh my god, aliens, and it was like, what was that outsider to push the boundaries, the knowledge, and all of that sort of stuff? Oh, someone loves us. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> but yeah, no, it definitely is fascinating kind of looking back into like, you know, the ancient times when you're like, how did they come up with these things? How did mm. they get the, you know, resources or like even the ideas for it? Because, you know, you look back at it now and most of those things are part of like the seven wonders of the world. Yeah. But we can't seem to top any of it or like 
make it weird fixing some of them, but that's about it. It is really interesting to see. So, yeah, there was, uh, outside of that, yeah, so the Library of Alexandria, mm-hmm. that held so much knowledge and it just got burnt to the ground because I just had a quick little look of it. it. That's also in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. I actually didn't realize it was in Egypt for some reason. <laughs> Never looked too much into this because it's lost knowledge. But yeah, for me, I like to focus on Egypt, but their culture, their history, their knowledge and understanding is ungodly. Mm. Like it's insane. The precise perfection, the ruling, the to have such a, what, what you would say, barren land to make it so prosperous and vibrant and lively. It's, it's, well, not only is it impressive, but mm. to maintain that for eons. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that's fair. To keep it going. Mm. I don't know, I'm trying to think, because... Oh, did y'all have anything else to no, add? No, like, it, it's, it's difficult, because, like, um, I, well, obviously, like, I haven't researched a whole bunch about it, but... It's funny because, like, you get so many different opinions about it. Like, obviously, like, you have your opinion on, like, you know, the perfectionism and stuff like that. Mm. To me, personally, I could be wrong and I don't really know. But I feel like, because I've said this before in a podcast, that there's no such thing as perfectionism. Yeah. Um, It's just something that humans have created and it's unreachable, basically. You can get close to it, but it's non-existent. Like, what is perfection? You, You don't see it and like it i don't know it's a it's a, another topic that i can expand on one yeah. day maybe yes. but yeah like but touching a little bit on that like the mm. perfectionism yeah yeah especially nowadays mm. that is something that it's just it doesn't exist no it doesn't no. you're right it doesn't exist and looking at that from for me what they had back then mm. to what we have now and how much we've de- well quote unquote developed and evolved mm. to still not reach what they have to me, that's out of our reach. It's ungodly. That, to me, would be, you know, quote-unquote, almost not perfection, but mm. perfection at the same time. Yeah. See, that's but, where I disagree. But yeah. that's your... Yeah, that's fair. Like, I feel like... It's, like, lost. It's lost. It's, <laughs> I feel like it's more rules and morals from back then. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like morals now, obviously, they have changed and stuff like that. But you had statuses back then that really depicted a person's power whereas now obviously it's really pushed that we're all equal Mm -hmm. to me i feel like it's a stagnant pacing of just you know i don't know like it i uh, i should have like researched a bit more but back then i feel like there was more of a structural rule to it yeah Mm. and people admitted their inferiority and superiority and stuff like that whereas like now i feel like it's confused and i feel like there's too much you know sensitivity within your roles your significance and even existence but like i feel like we're stagnant and i feel like we're going to continue that until we find something that really changes the society in general yeah but yeah that's probably just my take on it oh no i i definitely agree so Mm. where i think of i actually should have explained where i think in perfection i think in like the architecture Mm. and like the not the way of living and like the economy yeah literally just housing crops all that sort of like uh the geography of it Mm. but in the social economics yeah they had some good like they had structure yeah over time we are all now quote unquote trying to become equal and the people who still hold well power yeah are trying to belittle and force those who want power yeah. down like this like think of it in this like also like you know um design and um architecture though you build a house for example um and then you wait a year later you come back to the design but then can you improve it mm. you probably can that's what i mean so was it not perfect before and it's not going to be perfected after yeah that's my take on it so something can never be perfected but it can be improved and i feel like that's a very special thing because there's always going to be development because perfection is boring yeah it is yeah to me like it's very boring because you've done it's empty you've got nothing to improve on yeah exactly so and then you because you can also take that and say, like, some of those 
key historical wonders of the world. Mm. The Colosseum, yes, it's collapsed, but you, would you want to fix that? That is not only history, but it's... Mm. <laughs> Just over that now. <laughs> <laughs> Shush, leave me alone. Continue talking about perfection. Even though we're talking about religion, but continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I was going to try and circle back. No. <laughs> oh, actually, no. Do you know, what? We'll, we'll stop that there because that could be for another time. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfection is. It's not real. No, it's not. No. And it's that's what construct. that's what I was trying <laughs> really? to get. At. Yeah. 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 So, like you said, perfection. It's not achievable. It's not real. How did we drift so far from the topic? Egyptology. I, I, was, I was looking at my phone and I look up, oh, perfectionism. I mean, I'm glad you started first with religion because I was going to be like, I'm an atheist, so I have no fucking clue. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the I thing. don't want mine. I was going to say, that's the thing. To me, I, oh, I forgot what that word is, but I'm not necessarily an atheist. I'd like to think that there's something greater out there. Hmm. But I just don't see it. I yeah. I like the science. I like the statistics. Yeah. But I like that believing in what could be, what they have, what was originally around. Oh, yeah. Well, what white man decided Christianity was going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what Jesus said. Well, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> that's the thing. Jesus is technically ethnic. Uh, he's got ethnicity. ethnicity. Yeah, yeah, he does. But he's never depicted as exactly that. whitewashed. <laughs> Now we're into whitewashing. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get so many comments. But like, <laughs> no, no. circling back, <laughs> so circling, yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, I think there's lots of different. Well, uh, we know from doing like, religion I don't know if you guys thing. had like religion classes or anything like that. <laughs> no. Okay. Really? Not at all. Christianity. <laughs> Not all of our cult like schools. <laughs> For us, oh. there was the Catholic schools. Hey, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Christian. Public. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. Like, I know in my school in particular, my teacher was very adamant on teaching us more than just like. Catholic stuff and trying to expand more. Yeah. So we did, like, you know, we went Want back to and, explore something. Yeah, we researched, we did Judaism, Buddhism, we did Hasafarian, we did, hmm. like, I think we Buddhism. just did, like, native stuff in my school. Like, um, I don't want to butcher anything, but we learned about, like, the Torres Strait Islanders and then we learned about the um, Maui culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we learned about that. Now about, and then some of the real, I would say some of the real OG cultures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do that as well. Um, we because we just so happen to thankfully have a teacher who was best friends with like one of the elders, so he would just come in and be like, Robert, how are you, my buddy? And they would just like sit and talk and be like, Oh, yeah, let me teach you something. And the <laughs> elder just sat in class, I was like, All right, this just, what's happening. Yeah, like that um, kind of comfort is awesome. Yeah. And I guess for me, I liked it. Well, I like it. I remember reading somewhere that, oh, I could be wrong because I don't remember, and it was a little bit ago, yeah. but our Australian Indigenous culture is one of the oldest standing cultures to this day. Yeah, I've heard about something similar yeah. to that. It mm -hmm. wouldn't surprise me if like, that was the case. They date back uh, centuries and thousands upon thousands yeah. of years. Like, they have some deep connections. And it's honestly amazing, and the fact that it, their culture is, it's trying to be brought back to life and brought back to other people, because mm. unfortunately when the yeah. invaders did come... The it, stolen generation happened. Yeah, the stolen generation, it was smothered and pushed to the side, whereas now it's the understanding and like, bring that back, let's learn... But there's only so much you can do. Yeah. We're there's trying to make up for the mistakes we made back ages ago. Yeah, well, it, that's the thing. It's our answer. I personally would would not want to do that, but it's my yeah. ancestors. I now have to make up for their fuck-ups. Exactly. exactly. Well, my ancestors yeah. from Italy. We don't fuck-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I'm from, I'm from Scotland, Irish background. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, British for teas. Yeah. Next question, long. Ne yeah, yeah. Let, let's move on from this oh, one. I was going to answer it. Oh, no, 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 sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, like, the part where it says, like, what if one of them was right? I think it's interesting that we have to depict that a single religion has to be correct. It mm. can't be like, well, what if all of them are right? But you say whichever is more right, depending on how you, you know, lean towards the belief or mm. things like that. Because mm. they seem to be all quite, again, from a little bit of knowledge that I know, they seem to be quite similar, but they all just kind of stemmed off of each other mm. and then leaned yeah. in more into certain aspects or not. Mm. You know, obviously there's others that are completely different. Some have more gods or less gods or goddesses or <laughs> deities. It sounds like D&D. <laughs> but it's true, though. Like, there's so many different things. And I, why do we have to have one that's right? Well, if you no. look at it the way, as in, like, if you were to take out all names, all aspects, it is one community yeah. looking at a either a greater power 
or a higher being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is essentially it. Believing, respecting, it doesn't need to be named, but it is a community looking up to someone else yeah. or something else. Sorry. Trying to have faith in something that you know you can't see, but you just hope yeah. is there. Because mm-hmm. typically it's either to do with you know the land we're on or it's literally, hypothetically, yeah. it's up in the sky, no one can see, no one knows. That's why there's so much out there and everyone's like, no, I'm right, you're right, this is right, I'm right, I solely believe this. It's like, well, you you all could be right. Yeah. You don't Mm -hmm. fucking know. And that's the thing though, like, you know, I was brought up in a very, like, Catholic household. Things like that. (laughs) But at the same time, you know, my dad is not Catholic at all, but he was always the one that was like, at the end of the day, believe in what you want. He's the one that's like, I believe in science, you know, Big Bang, all that stuff. Mm. I'm like, well, I believe in Mother Nature. She is kind of her own thing and you know if you take time to sit and listen you know you can kind of hear what she's saying or feel the movements in the grass things like that so that's why like a lot of the times I'll literally just zone out because I'm listening to like the wind movements and the patterns and you know the bird circulations and all these little bits and pieces like Mm. it gets to the point where I do this a lot when playing uh, D&D with the other group that is these girls but (laughs) we go on a lunch break and I'll sit outside because it's you know kind of in the country quite quite country yeah you yeah. know it's just silence and all you hear is like nature and you don't hear it very often when you're kind of in the city no, you do not. so it's very nice to kind of just sit there and then you know one of the boys will have to come up to you and be like jada it's been 30 minutes do you want to come in <laughs> and i'm like oh i'm so sorry and i like go out like that's it's, my version of meditation it's a comfortable silence yeah that's the thing it doesn't have to be a you know, I'll leave an offering, let's, you know, praise almighty Lord. I, I, that's not my particular thing. Mine is more, you know, acknowledge. Yeah, acknowledge that, like, the land, and if, you know, obviously try not to destroy it too much. If you give, you know, help with nature and things like that, they will be nice to you. It's the whole mm. give and take situation. Calm mm. as a bitch. Exactly. Mm. Speaking of bitches. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of bitches. <laughs> Segue. If aliens took one person to represent the human race, who would you want it to be? Is this dead or alive? This is dead or alive. Okay. So obviously we will say like <clears throat> if they were dead, obviously they're now alive, they're not just like six feet underground. Hey, take the body. <laughs> this is how we see ourselves dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all asleep. I have one person. Who is it? Has he got a soothing voice? Oh no, I'm thinking of another <laughs> 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 I don't know if it's a he she, but um, I want to. I'm just for a bit of context. I'm about to turn my computer around. I choose Dame Edna. Oh, <laughs> oh, you. you might want to explain who Dame Edna is because it's only an Aussie thing. Yeah, Dame Edna is. Oh, uh, how would you explain it? I only know the male side of Dame, Dame, Dame Edna. Edna. So Dame Edna, if you were to look it up, is. For me, I like to think it's like a Robin Williams, uh, yeah, Robin Williams cross. No, I, no, no. You mean Mrs. Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah, yeah, like like a Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. So it basically, it's like the first like I could be butchering this, but the first like cross dressing. Yeah, it's similar to that. Yeah, but that one there is just pure comedy. You don't mm. Know who Ain Demo is? I have no idea who this person is. Real. Oh. <laughs> this I, is I, like I know of this person. Yeah, I only know the guy. Basically, he's a guy that dresses like girl, yes. and he, well, from what I know, he's a very, she sings, doesn't she? She sings, yeah. and he plays the violin. Yeah, so mm. it's, oh, here's one. It's like a Miss, it's like a, a Mrs. Brown's Boys. Okay. You just, watched her with us. Like we just, eight episodes. We just introduced her. No, but I, that's just what I'm saying. You seem like <laughs> yeah. the person. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, like yeah. a Mrs. Brown. Yeah, yeah. It's pure comedy, funny. You get into some deep talks, yeah. but yeah. dress is absolutely, fu- like, hilarious that you just feel so comfortable looking at, like, enjoying. Gotcha. Mm. Aliens would be so confused. Exactly. <laughs> I think, it would leave us alone. I think for me, I'd have to say Morgan Freeman. Oh, that's ah, what I like. Yes. Voice. Like, oh that's goodness. what I mean. Like, not even like the voice aspect, but I just feel like, you know, he's a person that not only does most people love, but he has enough like knowledge and understanding of both like science and Christianity and all like religions in general. He's such a well-rounded person. I feel like if the aliens were to take them, a they would just sit there and be like, uh, voice, nice. They just enjoy his voice, but also they would actually learn something as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, if we were to be all, all acting stupid, and the alien was like, what's happening? He'd be like, 
it's child, I don't know. He meant me. Just be like, just ignore it. It's fine. Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross. So I just imagine. Yeah. yeah just Teaching imagine like, aliens yeah, how to paint. How to paint. Oh like, God. happy see, little trees. Yeah, they're like, oh, why are they blowing that up? Happy little mistake. It's okay. <laughs> just move on. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I think I talked about it before, but like, I would say Robin Williams. Yeah. Like, he's like my comfort character, comfort person. Yeah. Still to this day. And I just think like, because he's like, not always happy, but he's always got that smile on his face. And he's just like very goofy and can make you like comfortable straight away. Yeah. And stuff like I just feel like with all his impressions, he will just be like, yeah, "This is nice." Stan Lee would be another good one. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Because like Stan Lee could be like, "I could just put this in a new comedy." Yeah. Like, oh my god. You're like, "Why are they dressed like that?" Let me tell you why. Boom. It's like if you were like, freaking like make Spock go up there or some <laughs> shit <laughs> from Star Trek. That'd be kind of funny. Oh, what's his name? What, Leonard? Oh, um, uh, Nimoy. Nimoy. I can't believe his name. Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Spock. Uh, what's his name? I want to mix something. But, uh, oh my god, can we send Sheldon up there? <laughs> yes. Bro, yeah, Leonard Sheldon. Nimoy. I just said it. Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, I, it's I his last it. name. Yeah. Bro. Yay, thank you Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I've never watched it. <laughs> it's Star Trek. Bro. I've never watched Star Trek. No, but Big Bang Theory taught me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. I would not know the name no, uh, during Big Bang. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, who would we send to the aliens? Not that. Mm. Um, Let me more. We were talking about uh, Stan Lee before. No, still on your topic. Big um, Bang Theory, Spock. Oh, no, I was aliens. saying if, if we send Sheldon up, he'll oh, feel at home. Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah I, I would send <gasps> Wait, there was an episode Sheldon. where he was like, I become their pet. It, knowledge is power. <laughs> and I do not get to die. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. Yeah, that would be mine. <laughs> Alright. What, in, what innovation in human history do you think was the most important? Innovation. In, in what? Can you say innovation. 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 What innovation in human history do you think was the most important? Letting women vote. <laughs> oh! I mean, women should be in power. <laughs> That's a fair point. How many wars have women caused? Zero. <laughs> How many men have caused wars? All of them. <laughs> Is this what you mean by innovation? No. That's what I meant. We can say like inventions as well. The guy who made paper. Yeah. Light. <laughs> oh, no. See, I was thinking more like the steam engine. Yeah, like, I was thinking Industrial Revolution kind yeah. of phase, yeah, with, like, the steam powers and stuff. Because, you know, once you kind of got that, it <laughs> spiralled into, like, oh, we can make other things, like, you know. My mind went to the assignment of, like, the printer, then you compare it to the printer from now. Yeah, like, the printer yeah. press and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's it all started, well, roughly, because of the steam engine. Once you got, like, figuring out how to get things to move, I mean, you, I guess you could go a bit further back and be, like, a horse and cart. Yeah. But, mm. again, it's still the whole, like getting things to move from A to B. Well, I, I did just quickly Google it because I would have zero clue, but like you said, Alyssa, the printing press is like one of the big ones. Same with the compass. Um, no, I do not want to subscribe. <laughs> Paper <laughs> currency, uh, steel, the electric light, like domestication of horse, of, the, of horses. Mm. Like there's some of the topics that we said, transit, like, you know, the communication that Transistors, yeah, like those in things. the industrial revolution i feel like uh, like i don't know this could just be one of many like yeah. uh, it created such a new level of communication and even like um industry um that i think was a really big step for us so yeah i don't know i just whenever i think of like big you know the one giant leap for mankind type of thing is always like you know how do we get from a to b without having to use like animals essentially or just walking yeah and that's yeah. why i go oh steam powered things how they figured mm -hmm. out be like hey let's chuck this in and see what happens and i'll look yeah. it moves things or you know cogs i guess would be to breaking it down more yeah. and more but mm -hmm. i feel like that's really helped us to kind of do what we do now because you know we still use cogs and so many things nowadays mm -hmm. I think it's in almost any piece of machinery, like heavy machinery. Yeah. I was just going to say, whoever decided to burn like coffee beans and just like grind <laughs> them up, that's a marvelous invention, like the coffee. The coffee. <laughs> the coffee itself. Oh, the tea. There was 
one thing going along more like the medicinal purpose is like antibody antibiotics. Oh yeah, like penicillin and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, some of the things that have like, you know, mm. killed so much bacteria that like is obviously harmful to us, that's yeah. not helpful and beneficial. That kind of stuff, like going through wars, plagues, outbreaks, all of that has been such a giant leap from, you know, your normal medicinal herbs to Holy shit, I can cure you with this little tablet. <laughs> it's like, take this, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff. Sorry, I was <laughs> just thinking of cameras too. Like, mm. I know, like, they're not as emphasized as, like, the telephone and obviously the lamp. But it's it's such a, it's such a, like, oh, what's the word? I don't know, like, sentimental thing of history. Yeah. Oh, so like that like that saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you see it. Yeah. That there's so much to it. You know, the fact that you can still get old cameras quite easily now and you know, and you can take photos and you can experience what they had to experience. Like the new one that I have is from nineteen twenty. It's in World War Two. It's called a pocket camera. And soldiers used to use it um back in the war. And it's incredible. The fact that I can hold this experience what they and like the weight of the camera, let alone being it called like a pocket yeah, camera. It's, it's, 20s, it's yeah. crazy. That, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I've got so many of them, I can't even like, mm. but, but yeah. Like, it is really cool to kind of see it, especially with like the cameras and cause you have like almost one per decade now. Yeah. You can kind of see we've gone from a really giant camera to really little camera to big cameras. And we keep going through this like wave yeah, almost yeah. pattern of sizes. And it goes with that with yeah. all of our technology. You can see that with phones too. You yeah. know, they were <laughs> yeah. really big and chunky bricks to like teeny tiny little phones to like now massive things that are almost the size mm. of tablets. And it's to ridiculous. wireless to like we used to have antennas on them and all the you know foldables yeah. and we used to have buttons. Now we're losing buttons. Yeah. We're losing yeah. plugs. We literally have screens. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's crazy. It is. Waiting for the day where it all just becomes like you know you can flick your wrist down. And it's all like. Like, yeah. they're projects, that. Yeah, yeah, projects onto your arm because I know you can get that kind of stuff. Yeah, literally. It's yeah, because like versions. you can get keyboards that are projected, and you just tap on you on yeah. the table. Yeah, and it knows what you're typing. I'm I, like, oh, I don't shit. personally like that, but I know it's like future yeah. kind of stuff. I'm yeah, saying, is it because of the like satisfactory clicking sound you're missing? Or? <laughs> no, it's the physical <laughs> interaction. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's. Well, obviously I'm a hands-on person and I'm an artist. So having that feeling of, you know, just simple stuff, the texture, the colour, the feeling and the sound is like really important. Yeah, no, that's a bad point actually. But yeah. Mm. Ooh. So <laughs> this one's my... You can all use your phones for this because I don't think any of us are going to know more than like two songs. But <laughs> tell me ten, ten songs oh, that make up the soundtrack of your life. If we can't think of ten, just think of like one or two. What's like your like theme song, let's say? So this, I was gonna say one of my big ones is, actually we played it in the car on the way back home, was um, Agoraphobic by Corpse. Ah. Like not to like, you know, oh my God, Corpse is amazing. Yeah, I, I think he's such a great guy and all that. And I'm, I respect how well he's kept his privacy, but mm -hmm. that song hits so many levels. Like I could be in the happiest mood and I have that song come on my playlist and I yeah. just kind of zone out. Yeah. Like that's my, connecting song mm -hmm. yeah i feel like there's always so many different songs depending on your mood like yeah. i always like i have particular songs or artists that really just get me into a mood i'm like okay this is good yeah yeah, yeah. like right now and i always butcher her name i always talk about but like ashiko or oh uh, yeah I, and they can never say her name right but um her song little boy it makes me feel so like powerful and confident mm. i'm like yes this yeah. is what i want you know that had to be on my list there's that one, and for me, the other one would be uh, Coming Home by D. That's such a... Like, just It's always been the song that I've always listened to. Yeah. And it, every time, I it always plays when I'm, you know, on a flight home when we used to take flights <laughs> to places. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Or, like, you know, it just was one of those things where it's like, oh, all right, I'm going to go home. Like, I feel I feel good. I feel yeah. happy. Yeah. There's that one, and I'm trying to think what the other one's called. Oh, Dead and Gone. That's what it's called. Cool. Yeah, I remember Justin that one. Justin Timberlake. Mm. Oh, there we go. But yeah, I would say they're my top three for the moment. <laughs> I'm just realizing what, like, because I'm thinking the ones that I, not only do I connect, connect with, but I could play this at any time and my, like, 
my mood would change. It like, mm -hmm. it's just so comforting. So I've got actually a recent one, which is called Shum by Go. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they were on Eurovision. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's almost, to me, it's like very Nordic. Oh, got you. What um, country was this? <laughs> hold on, hold on. One of them. Yeah, I, that's probably like really bad that I don't know it. Oh, that's uh, fine. It was a bit ago. Uh, who? Uh, Ukraine. That's right. So Ukraine. Ukraine. I absolutely loved their song, and um, this kind of bit of a shit uh, shit taken. This is a bit of my uh, my like comedic side. Yeah. Bitch lasagna. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> it's 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 a good song. It like is. that one there, hands down. Don't, like, don't it's, that's it. It just gets you into like such a like carefree type of mood. It's mm. so good. Live in La Vida Loca. Ricky yeah. Martin. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Oh my god. Is, oh, there's so many, but there's a lot of songs like that literally just give me chills. Mm -hmm. Like and like I've even got a playlist called Butterflies. Like because you get that oh. whole like feeling kind yeah. of thing. One of my favorites is Charlie Boy by the Lumineers. Oh, like yeah. it's such a like a pretty song. Like it's sad, but it's like you know, it really expresses like the love for Charlie. Like he goes off to war and his mother is, you know, heartbroken and it's such a loving connection between it. And I don't know, it just it's very comforting. Yes, it's kind of sad, but like mm. hey, um, that makes sense. Though. Yeah. And then Take on Me. That's like I, oh, I can't do it because it's my it. most favorite um, uh, music video, like hands down, my favorite. You know, whenever I think of music videos, I do think of you know the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, <laughs> Thriller specifically. Yeah, that was such a good music video. That mm -hmm. like that there alone was like the music video <clears throat> that like mm -hmm. sunk in. Like I don't necessarily watch music videos, but the ones that I do. Mm -hmm. I will. It stays with me yeah. forever. Yeah, there's a lot of like, you know, um, travel songs. The ones that like really get you lost. I in actually, the moment. yeah. I think I don't know if I've shown you this song, but it's called Ethereal by uh, Aksha. I'm pretty sure we were doing that for a project, and you suggested it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was to me, it was happy, sad, calm. Like it had yeah. all the emotions. Mm -hmm. It was. Sh it's a short song. Like it's only a minute and four seconds. But yeah, that there just yeah it does oh, it for you. Yeah, it makes me feel weightless. Yeah, my biggest thing with like the songs that I have is like to like live in the moment. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everything around you just stops, and you just take in and you just feel your surroundings, and it's just you're in a bliss, I guess. So but yeah. What about you, homie? I got a list. You got your list? <laughs> yeah. I, I could feel you typing a mm -hmm. list and I'm like, oh no. Um, okay, so I did 10. Oh, nice. That's what it said. Um, I'm changing the last one out because I feel, yeah. Um, the first one I put was, I mentioned this before to you guys. Mm. Um, one okay Rook, I Was King. Yeah. Oh, that's my favourite song of theirs. Yeah. Um, it always just gets me in the mood and it's just like, I don't know, it's not supposed to be a song that can make you cry, but for some reason for me, the lyrics can make me cry. Mm. And it makes me think about like, oh yeah, when I was like, king, like, I can kind of, re not relate, but like, feel the emotion coming from that song. Yeah, you know? that bit of empathy kind of comes through. Yeah. Mm. That, like that nice connection. Yeah. And then like, the rest is like, <laughs> K-pop thing. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, the song called Burn from Nafla, who's my favourite like, rapper. Yeah. yeah. That song, it's just so calm. I don't think the lyrics are supposed to be, but like, it's so calming and it's just like my favorite song of his. Yeah. And it's so calming and relaxing, and it's just every time it comes on, I'm just like, I can relax now. Like, it's time to relax. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. And awesome. then Wave by 80s. Yes. Because every time that song comes on, just like the Hakuna Matata, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, it gives me the right vibe of just like, this is a happy song. This yeah. is my happy song. Mm. It immediately gives you the whole sensation of like, hey, let's just go and yeah. like, yeah. do yeah. random hand movements. Mm. You can't <laughs> see, but like, ooh. Yeah. And then like, Breathe Again by Corbin. Yeah. Yeah. That song just like, kind of, it's a push through song. It just reminds mm. me like, just if you keep breathing, you'll be fine. And just like, to take that breather, mm. to just like, stop and think and like, yeah, stop. 
take a breath. Yeah. And then like Change by 10K Rock mm -hmm. is one of my other favourites of theirs. It's just like it's just so moving as well. Like all the songs are. Yeah. I'm trying to think They have some really good songs. Um Downtown Downtown Baby by Blue. He's another rapper. And it's another calming song. It's just like all these songs have a, a nice mellow calm to them. Chill vibe. Um, yeah, chill mm. vibe. Gunshot by Card. It's just like, it, I find the meaning to that song very, very moving. Or very yeah. like, not touching, but just very like accurate of what they're trying to describe. Because like, the lyric is legit like, your words are, your words are like a gunshot, like they hurt. Yeah. And it's just like, I like this, this is very... It almost resonates in some parts with you. Yeah, because yeah. I think I talked about it when I, on the album thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait by Kun. It's like, it's legit just saying like, wait, 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 I don't want to wait no more. Like, yeah. being like fed up and just like, I've waited so long. I'm just like, I'm done waiting. Mm. Basically that kind of vibe. Fighter by Monster X, because that song got me through a lot of shit when it first came out. And then I put Don't Touch Me by Refund Sisters. They're just like these, um, they're on a TV show. It's got Jesse Huasa. And I'm not going to say the name, Claire Bushen, these two other idols mm. who are like big time idols. Yeah. And it's just basically like, don't mess with us. And like, yeah, it's just like a really like powerful song. Just being like, don't mess with us, we'll fight back or bite yeah. back. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's a confident building song. Yeah. yeah. I'm done. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were some good ones. Damn. I think the only two left I have like is Ribs by Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That song's like a really good drive, nighttime vibe kind of thing. And then I can't pick a favorite, but I love the Arctic Monkeys. I was waiting that, for that. That gives yeah. me in such a bad <laughs> bitch kind of mood. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want to know, like, that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, yes. ever since I've listened to which one is I have it in my playlist now because mm. every time I hear it, I'm like, oh my, I'm like, yes, I like this song. Put mm. it in. You know, every time I play it, finally, you know, people are like, oh, this is a Dakota song. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's do I want to know? Yeah, or it's like why do you always call me when you're high and stuff like that? Oh, I know like, that one. Yeah, that's what we want. But yeah, it was, those songs are awesome. It, it gives me like another like Paramore kind of vibe. Mm. I know they're completely different, but it's still like the fuck you kind of thing. So. Yeah. Mm. Still speaking of songs, what is your slow dance in the kitchen song? There's a such a precise. I, was like, you I slow had like. Dance I was <laughs> I actually was going through like you when you were doing like I'm gonna pick up the ten, but uh, how's Moving Castle? That one. Da if I can dance, da da if I could just dance in the kitchen to that with my significant other. Mm -hmm. That or Once Upon a December. Ooh. Uh, yeah, by Invadable Harmony. That does a research. I think <laughs> that's from uh, Anastasia. Uh, I think for me, mine would be. I don't want to set the world on fire by the ink spots. Uh, or I mean, it just dance, I mean, whatever you want. Or um, I can't think of the name of the song, but um, the s is it brain, brain function? Is it that <laughs> the song that um, is played when Captain America is dancing with Peggy? Oh Aww. yes, it's such a like. I can just imagine being like, okay, sit that one. It's yeah. just that sway. It's that swaying version, that or I See Fire by Sharon. Always. Oh, Always. I love that one. That is such a just slow dancing song. I would love to. Ah, I wonder what that song is now. Because <laughs> I cannot think what it's called. I was gonna say, well, the, hold on, I just want to really quickly. Yeah. Because it's kind of a bit of a piss take for like the rest of the 10 songs. Um, yeah, I okay. had, sorry, after a cereal, uh, what's new Scooby Doo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Escalate by Tazabi. Uh, Huma Huma Noka Noka Apple A. Uh, in High School Musical 2. Oh, gosh, mm -hmm. yeah. And this one, oh, Bring Me to Life Evanescence. Oh, yep. That sums me up. Yeah. <laughs> it does, yeah. But I think, yeah, slow dancing to Once Upon a December. Because I feel like when she had that, oh, it's in Anastasia, but when she had that scene in the ballroom, mm. she was dancing. Yeah. Just, it was, it felt like it was her, but it was in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, I love it. I don't really have any. The only one I can really think of is like, can you feel the love, love tonight? I just think that would even oh be a good one to dance to. Yeah, like yeah. Slowly. See, this sounds really bad. Oh my god, help me. <laughs> <laughs> going. But like, 
So obviously, like, for the listeners who don't know, like, I'm good friends with your boyfriend. I was just... <laughs> this sounds bad. But no, I was imagining, like, you two um, slow dancing, and then it just goes with, like, I'm in my way. And I'd be in the back, be like, I'm in my way. I'm in my way. You just see us in the window, like, <laughs> That's all I imagine is like this. So dancing is just me going, and then you take like, <laughs> <laughs> the light. I'm sorry, what was that? Um, that needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, no. that too. But like this one, we we've been playing it a while. I'm gonna like play a bit so we don't yeah, close right. What's the call? This is an ad. <laughs> Advertisements. And here's one now. <laughs> it's either that, just because like, because of like. And yeah. it would have to be this song if it comes oh up. Oh boy. Is it gonna be some like anime girl? No, 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 no. I'm shocked. Oh, no. <gasps> oh my yeah. god. Good old Isaac. <laughs> oh my god. I love that song. <laughs> oh my way. Oh Is it because I played it in the car that one time? <laughs> no, he was obsessed with Ice Age. It's his favorite movie. I fucking love um, oh, that song. You put any. Like animated cartoon film yeah. in front of me, and I can sing you just that. Any fucking song yeah. of this. <gasps> That's right. That was the one I was trying to remember. Yeah. Hot Wings. Oh, some like Wings. Rio. Oh, yeah. I want to party. Yeah, yeah, I want to. Oh. And then you can eat, baby. I want to party. I love her. I love her verse in it. Just her voice alone. Any song from Princess and the Frog. Favorite Disney movie right <laughs> yes, now. That's yes. my favorite Disney movie. I know. I just thought of it. I'm like, actually, they have some really good songs. Mm. I got voodoo. I got hoodoo. I, I got, got things, things I didn't even try. But I got friends on the yeah, other side. <laughs> I'm not going too deep. Yeah. I I can um, any Disney song, any Barbie, yeah. Bratz, I've animated n- like <gasps> Shrek. Mm. Yes. <laughs> For like not so dancing, but just dancing, it would be well. There's one I can think of that's kind of slow dancing, but it's too short for that. It'd be, um, We're Simply Meant To Be from Nightmare Before Christmas. <gasps> but oh, yeah. that's more of like a sitting and kind of overlooking the city type of feel. Mm. I feel like that's like the slow drive and you just kind of hold hands and you're just like, oh! Yeah. It's a very wholesome song. That one, or like if you want to have like a sassy dance, it'd be the, um, the Oogie Boogie song. <gasps> like, oh, you're joking! You're Hold joking. on, which, which version? You can't be. You can't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, guess. wait. Is in like the OG version? Yeah. See, I like the. Oh, fuck. I forgot what the group is called. I actually. Funny enough, saw it on TikTok. Yeah. It was the group that. Like, he has like the deep baritone voice. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. Google it and I'll get back to it really quick. But yeah, because every time I think of that song, I just like. Because I picture it so well, that particular movie. I As soon as he like finishes. Jack's just like leaning up against the thing and be like, "Sup?" But he's doing like the draw me like one of your French girls type poses. Yeah, and it's like gotcha. I love mm-hmm. that. It's mm-hmm. voice play, oogie boogie. Yes, the deep, deep voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's such a good song. Lace me down. No. Songs are great. Yeah. I want to dance to like um, it's an anime song. It's from One Piece. Yeah, yeah I, I think need. like I've never really thought of a slow dance song before, like ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. I can't play it, but um, it was one a while ago. It's a Japanese one. Um, it's just an instrumental piano, but it's called Orange. It's from Dokuse, which is classmates in mm-hmm. English. Um, it's just really pretty. It's just, yeah, very pretty soundtrack. I'm Googling it right now really quick. Okay. I, I don't know if it'll come up. I could be wrong about... Uh, <laughs> I looked up the English version, like, uh, classmates, mm-hmm. and then I put... Orange? Oh yeah. no. No, no, no. Who do you think so came up? Scary. Uh, no. The annoying orange. Oh my god, I remember that. I think it might be on SoundCloud, but. I was gonna say this. From Kato, it's just a remix of the Grand Line. Or to the Grand Line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not Nate. <laughs> hey, um, Nate is beautiful. There is one. Oh, I feel like I would. I, I would dance to this by myself. Because mm-hmm. this is like a kind of. An emotional song to me, but it's uh, funny enough. Look how high we can fly it, from Barbie's <laughs> uh, Princess and the Pop Star and uh, I Wish I Had Her Life. Those two songs from Princess and the Pop Star. Yeah. I'm a diehard Barbie fan and Bratz and everything else, but those two songs there are just so emotional to me. We are the yeah. wings, we are the wings. Come join the club, we are the wings. That's the dance break number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's when I just want to get back in touch. <laughs> oh no, yeah. it's either that or like, um, oh, what was it? Da, 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 da. Oh. <gasps> oh. I'm a facing average girl, girl, and I'm here to save the world. You can't stop me because I'm oh, I found possible. It. <laughs> We've just turned into a musical number now. Oh, 100%. No, I just no found my music. So. Hey. Um, so, the um, the artist is called Orange. Gotcha. With yeah. a Z oh. on the sound. Well, oranges. It, the song is called Arigato, which is obviously thank you mm-hmm. in Japanese. Um, yeah, I've got it up. Will I get copyrighted for this? Yeah, oh, okay. that's fine. Alright, it's very I've like... Song's being played, so Hi. Okay. <laughs> it's very like... Oh, uh, yeah. It's very pretty, kind it of. Is. It is very pretty. Can you send that? Because I cannot pretty. find it for the life of me. <laughs> just, just oh, it's there! Oh, don't you say it? Classmates! You said that already. But I didn't realize it was like those classmates. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually realize it was that either. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Nah, but that song, I don't know, like, Still I remember looking it up, um, like, like, when it first came out, because mm-hmm. I loved oh, the me. piano in the background. So, right. and then I found it, and I'm like, this is really fucking pretty, so... Yeah. Oh, that reminds me of another song. I have to bring it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of those spirals that we just keep doing. But it's a... I think it's either a cover or made for the game. It's by Nate Wins Battle because bless that song. But, um... It's a piano... It's a piano cover of um, the Zelda song. Oh my god, yes. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, is it like an Ocarina of Time kind of vibe? <laughs> I'm going to find it. Mm. I just, see, there's a problem with trying to remember what the things are called. Yeah. See, I would like, I would love to get even like the instrumental um, songs from your name, like mm, even yeah. Sparkle or or not Zen Zen because that's more of like an upbeat like like crazy thing. But That'd be interesting though, as like, like any Studio Ghibli like instrumental song from any of the movies. Mm. Insanity. <laughs> They always nail the soundtrack. Oh, they do. Very pretty. Oh, I love Yeah, this, anyway, this song is, it's one of those ones where, because it's all just piano, but it's just so, you just feel yourself moving with it. I don't know how else to describe it other than that, but you just kind of like sway. I'm surprised you didn't say any fruit basket openings. Yeah. Okay, season three opening. That's my favorite. <laughs> so yes, I do have to admit, season three is opening is amazing. Yep. But mm-hmm. I just feel like they're not like slow dancing songs. Oh yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just mm. eh. They're, I mean, they're good. I love the entire show with my all my heart and more. But mm. it just I don't know. It's not what I think of when I think of songs straight away. Yeah, no, no, no that's fair. I'm gonna go all yeah, the way back. To if me. I were to slow dance to any like like songs at all. For me, like in the kitchen at home or anything, that yeah. it's either got to be pure insanity where I'm like yelling, screaming, and my neighbors are gonna be knocking on my door because they're gonna say, Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Or it's either that emotional where I'm like, Ah, oh, you're yeah. fluttering by sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> See, the Doki say sound like that song for me, <laughs> wow, um, reminded me of Up for like two seconds, <laughs> like the old piano, but I don't think that's a really like. I mean, it is a loving kind of one, but it's kind of sad. So yeah, it's like it's a mixture. Yeah. So I, I finally found what the song is. Hmm. I'm gonna butcher the name, but um, mid it mid like fuck English. It's from the Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess. But, <gasps> My um, favorite game. That one. Oh, know. Midna's Lament. Yeah, it's. I'll play a little bit, but it's just because this is all it is. The whole <gasps> song is just. So I mean, but it's very like. And then, have you taken me? Yeah, that's what I mean by like it's. It's a good oh. like slow song, but it's also like you it can makes kind me of... want to play it now. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. I work in something in the corner. <laughs> I miss that. Game. I break the chair. There's that one, and this one isn't a. Um, this one isn't, again isn't a slow dancey one. But I remember when I was younger and I first heard this, I'm like. I want to be engaged to this song. This is so stupid. <laughs> not married. Not anything that no. engaged. Yeah. It's uh, Dawn of the Third Day. But it's literally like... Dan, 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 dan. It's, it's so country, but it's so... See, I had that kind of thought. Like, if I was engaged to this song. It's like Thinking of You by Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Mm. 
like, it's such a weird song, but I liked the lyrics because it was just talking about like, you know, I know she gives me everything. She's my courage. She's my strength. She's my everything. Aww. I hope I'm only the same for her. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then he, he goes into like, you know, now we'll never be the same ever since I learned your name. But now I hope you can be, you know, my princess in the dawn of the third day. And it's like, wholesome. But then you just hear, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I have no idea what he said. I asked Ed, like, what song would you slow dance to in the kitchen? Yeah. He said Careless Whisper. Oh know. my god. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> We're gonna be googling. Oh my Do you not know what God. Kayla's Whisper is? I probably I don't know the name. Please look it up. You'll know as soon as you hear it. Oh, you'll know it. You I know, know I will know it as soon as it plays. Wait, I got ads. So I got like, did you say Kayla's Whisper? Yeah. 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 Merely when it plays, you will know straight away. It is the most generic. Oh my God! This one is right. It's the most generic white song. I didn't know that's what it was called. I never bothered to look it up. I was like, it's the da -na 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 it's, song. It's the most generic white it's song possible. It's so <laughs> funny. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I love it. Anywho. Next. <laughs> okay. And hold on, really quick. Yeah. Yeah. There's one song that I know quite a fair few people hate because it's like a, it's technically a troll song, but um, when you get Rickrolled, you know. Uh, oh, I have a few up. Next it's iconic. Like I love that I song. I love that song so much. Yeah. It's it's so so I only know it as the Rick Roll song. Like the you know what I mean. Yeah, and a lot of people I've got his that. vinyl. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I adore that song. That song. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's such a good song. Oh. I can't believe I just got trolled by that. <laughs> that shocks you? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got trolled from my sister. <laughs> the YouTube got trolled by some guy on the internet. I saw TikTok. It was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Like sent him a picture. Like no, here's a cute link. link. Yeah, oh, here's a cute link of puppies. Did you just roll YouTube? I did. <laughs> yeah, that Anywho. was good. Yep. But kind of not even going off of that at all. But at what moment in your life did you feel absolute bliss? I'm still waiting for that moment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was waiting for one of you to do that. Bliss is such a hard thing to find. Cause yeah, for me it has to be. I have to be like absolutely comfortable and almost vulnerable in the environment I'm in, let alone like the sounds. If something small happens or like, let's say have a branch breaks or something, yeah. that sound there will go, fuck, I don't like it. I need either silence with nice noises or nothing at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, kind of talking back a little bit ago into the podcast, the basically saying about like nature and things like that. So my absolute bliss is when I can kind of sit down and immediately zone out into the sounds around me. So I tend to do that, again, a lot in like when I'm sitting in grass in particular and I can listen to the wind around me to either that or when I'm just lying in water because sounds kind of muted. Like you can mm, still hear stuff, but yep. it's very like muted. Yep. So it's like, oh, okay. And my body's also so weightless. I just can kind of relax mm, yeah. and then if I want to I can kind of submerge more and feel even more just kind of I don't know this the sense of like joy and happiness just washes over me mm. no definitely I think the last I can remember so I think it was when me and Shy went to Melbourne um oh spoiler my sister's called Shy that's fine um oh yeah any, any who. <laughs> Um, so when we were in the hotel and stuff like that, I, you know, I had a shower, I had like a drink with me and I put the chair like right next to the window and I just like TV was off, Shy was in bed. It was like just me staring like out and just watching everything and looking at the lights and it was kind of a moment. It was like, I'm here yeah. kind of thing. And I think that was probably like the best feeling. It's the little things and I got to like absorb where I was and absorb just the scenery and stuff. So that was probably like where I was most happy. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um Yeah, mine's a bit like with my sister as well. It's because like my sister is very much like not a touchy feely kind of person. She's like, mm. okay, one hug and go away kind of person. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like there was like one day she had like a cold or something. Not to take advantage of that. But like, yeah. <laughs> like, she had a cold and like she was just like laying her head in my lap and letting me hold her. 
and then like she would just like laugh sometimes and be like really cute mm. like when she just like yeah lets me hold her and like we can just like do like kind of stuff like that i'm like this is really nice and yeah when she has those like when you have those like sibling moments together i guess yeah even mm. like when i like pick her out from like her like school i'll say mm-hmm. it'll be easier but yeah. like when i pick her up from school she's just like always like happy and like always likes the car ride with me i'm like this is nice i like this i like yeah. this a lot yeah <laughs> it's just those simple things in life that can be the biggest bliss yeah you know it doesn't have to be this over top extravagant thing hmm. like again talking for me in particular most of the time it's like all right quiet time you know personal time yeah like yeah. i am you know i can have the list time with people but I feel like true bliss is by myself. Yeah. Because, you know, I find bliss or happiness, you know, seeing all my friends interact on talk or seeing them happy. That's my, like, I'm now happy. Hmm. But to be, like, truly bliss and just kind of like, truly happy with myself is having that quiet time here and there. Doing that little thing here and there. Whatever it is. Even if it's like, all right, I'm going to sit in a room and read a book. That's my little bliss moment. That you're gonna make those moments occasionally because otherwise you're gonna drown in stress. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I guess my spot, mm-hmm. my like little bliss would be when I went to the uh, Himji Gardens. Mm-hmm. I just brought like a bit of food, I brought my book and some music, and I just like sat there. Yeah. Oh my god, and it was when it was quiet, no one was around, I just would see the ducks, the birds, the pond and the fish and like the rustle. I felt so comfortable and so happy there that I was at ease. It yeah. was blissful. Mm. Everyone was away from me and everyone was gone. I was like, shut the fuck up everyone, let me be. Yeah, it's beautiful <laughs> when it can happen. Mm. And then someone ruins it and you're like, I want to kill you. And because like, <laughs> just the, like, the atmosphere and what was around me, it was absolutely stunning. So it already like took me there mentally. Yeah. Oh, sorry, visually it took me there. And then I sat myself down, read, started reading my book and had my music on for a bit of sound. And yeah. oh, mentally I was just like in heaven. Hmm. Yeah. And then the final question is who would you pick as your godparent for your kids or like adopted kids? Or if you don't want to have kids, just who would you pick to have that role if you were to have that. I'm trying to incorporate like everything, all the things. Yeah. Essentially, who do you trust enough? <laughs> I'm gonna be a Debbie Downer and be like, one, I do not want kids, and yeah. two, I have not found that person yet. So. And that's completely fine. Yeah. You don't have to find that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a bit of a hard thing, especially like when in my family, because like if you don't pick someone from within your own family. Mm-hmm. You get in trouble, so I'm like, I'm gonna wait till the day actually happens. Oh, yeah. I think I have that too. Yeah, it's like oh, my no. family's weird. <laughs> I'll say this because, like, even like you have, there's like a rule. You have to put your parents' name in your child's name. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, I'll give an example. I won't use her like proper name, but it'll be like Gemma, Teresa. Well, yeah, like Gemma, Camilla, Nicolina, Roberta. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has to have both the mom's name. You know uh, what I mean? yeah. Or you pick one yeah. or something. Yeah. Or like the first name has to be something similar to their name. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, uh, Mom, are you happy with no? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. can have the middle name and that it. <laughs> we, yeah. we have something similar in our family, but it's with uh, every firstborn male yeah. takes on their father's name. So, like, for example, my dad doesn't have it because he's the second. And he didn't have a boy, so <laughs> I stuffed that up. But, uh, <laughs> like, oh, God. Well, it's true. But like, you know, like his older brother has it. So, you know, instead of the name that we call him by, you actually are supposed to call him by like his father's name, which is his first name. But everyone calls him by the middle name. Yeah. It's yeah. so stupid. So like, I'm just gonna use his real name because he doesn't care. But like, you know, his name is Glenn, but that's his middle name. His actual name is David, which is my grandfather's name. And it keeps going. So oh. his actual name is uh, his middle name is David, but his actual name is Benjamin. And it keeps going up. Oh Imagine working with someone. It's like, hi, I'm, I'm Glenn. It's lovely. And then you finally learn your real name is David. What yeah. the shit? Dude, that's yeah. like my dad. He's yeah. got like four names. That's mm-hmm. crazy. But it's, all because, like, it's all because they're abbreviated. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Because his name is Giuseppe. Yeah. Then it goes to Joseph. Yeah. Then it'll go to Joe. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like... The yeah. abbreviation of the abbreviation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's similar to like my uncle as well. Um, so my nana was very much the whole like, I want all of my children's names to have like Catholic names. And then she had her like 
fifth one is like, I'm running out of ideas. Mm -hmm. So she literally went up to her priest and was like, what do I do? I want to call him Ivan, but like, I want to call him John Paulo, but like, that ain't Catholic enough. He was like, well, just call him Ivan then, I don't know. It's Russian for John Paul. And he's, she's like, oh sweet, I'll take it. And just went and was like, I'm the name of this. <laughs> so we only found that out recently, like his kids and I. It was so funny because we now go up to him and be like, Ivan, Ivan. And if he doesn't answer, we're like, John Paul, mm -hmm. answer the damn phone. Oh my god. Just answer us. <laughs> and he just yeah. turns around to everything now. He just gives up. Mm. But imagine like going up to someone and be like, hey, what can I name my kid? Do the Russian version. It's fine. It's still the same name. Oh my but god. Even if you're not Russian. Yeah. No, we're not. No, we're new. Mm. Do you know what? I don't actually know if I've got anyone who I... Because, yeah, I want... <laughs> <laughs> Continue, please. I, because I do want kids, I don't know when, don't know, like, anything like that, but I don't actually know who I would put as, like, the godmother, godfather, you know, mm. all that sort of stuff. Like, that's a lot of responsibility for them as well. Yeah. If yeah. I fuck up somewhere, yeah, that's theirs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, like, yes, I've met people who, like, could potentially have that role, but it's not solidified. Yeah. And I think you won't no until it actually until happens. Until pop that shit out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll know because they'll be there from day one, you know, from when they were born and if, I don't know, it, it just happens. You know yeah. I, mean? I get you. Um, oh my God, sorry. No, okay. <laughs> I'm looking, I was on, I'm on Snapchat, but my high school is for some reason on like the little, you know when there's a red dot on Snapchat? Yeah. My whole high school is just like going crazy. My old high school. It's just like going crazy what and like happening? girls are just climbing in the toilet. Fair. Yeah. Just like, so you can do that. Mm -hmm. Don't you miss high school? Nope. <laughs> Backtrack. But like, I think for me, like if I had to pick a family, because normally in ours, like you pick either like family or you would choose like an auntie or an uncle you're close with. Yeah. So, like, I can think of. I'm not going to say the only uncle because I will get killed. Mm -hmm. But um, for a cousin I'm close with because I don't care enough. Okay. But I would pick my cousin Elijah and whoever he ends up marrying. Yeah. Because yeah. I know he's the person he wants to marry. Yeah. So if he ends up with his uh, girlfriend currently, bless I love her. <laughs> um, but I would pick them. But I'd also have to talk with, like, obviously, who I'm making the kid with because yeah. <laughs> they need to yeah, obviously yeah. be a part of that decision. Like, mm. if they say it's all up to me, then that's fair. But yeah. I want to make sure they're included. You know, they're included. Like, you know, if they want to. I don't know, let's just say if they have siblings, if they want to use, like, have their siblings, that's fine, or... And you yeah, don't know, because along the line, along the way, like, you could make some connection, hypothetically, yeah. with, you know, the sibling, like, mm. the, like, would be the child's uncle, and you could yeah. say, fuck, you could take care of this if I yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> but that's the thing, that, like, I technically have two sets of godparents. Same. Because for some reason... My parents were like, hey, you can have one, you can have one. Mm. All right, do But realistically, you don't have to. No, you don't have to Because we all. don't. Yeah. Um, not that I know of. We don't Blood have parents. any. No. I don't. No. Um, it's also too late for us to even like, oh, what if I did? Because we are adults. Yeah, it's, yeah it so. technically stops when you're 18. Bro, yeah. Yeah. bro, mine are from China. I haven't met them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I met them like once when I was a baby. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. The reason of this is like, I could be butchering, but I do not care. My dad wanted a promotion at work, so he got his boss to do it. Oh my Damn. fucking! Well, I did see. He was also friends with them, so like, yeah. yeah. So I got like, like, we you couldn't have done your brother. Yeah. <laughs> like, so literally, if any, if uh, not saying it would, but if both your parents had passed, I would be in China right now. You'd be, they, like, you'd be happy to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would be mm -hmm. your next of kids. Yeah. Shit! Uh, he, didn't, he didn't think that through. <laughs> no, he just wanted that promotion! Yeah, um. see, it's funny because, like, I mean, my whole family knows this, more or less. And they won't listen to this, but also, like, my parents essentially chose, like, their favourite out of the um, my mum's siblings, <gasps> oh, essentially. So, I either got the choice of going to, like, my mum's youngest sister, um, Auntie A, or yeah. my mum's oldest brother, which is Uncle Joe. Uncle B. <laughs> so, it's like, it was a 50-50 who I went to. It either I'd go to Little Hampton, like Mount Barker type area, yeah. or I'd be staying here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably, but you know, like, thankfully, obviously, my parents haven't died. Touching everything. <laughs> touch wood. Touching all of it. I love how I didn't touch the one thing that's wood. Yeah. But, um, you know, 
it was just interesting to talk because you know, like I have heaps of god siblings, and it's so weird to think. Cause I'm like, yeah, we're god siblings. I love it. Like my cousin, like when I met her, she introduced me. Like, oh yeah, he's my god sister. I'm like, oh yeah. We're god sisters and cousins. <laughs> like, oh my oh god, god. Yeah. they exist. <laughs> yeah, no, I I forget that too because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm your god sister. Like, what <laughs> happened to you? I, I don't have to look after you. It's fine. I'm, that's not my problem. It's like, Y'all good, homie. We're related by different blood. <laughs> yeah, very different blood. Mm. We're related by law. Yeah. Blood. Blood law. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a book. That oh, does. Oh shit. No, no, I'm just not a Skyrim buffet. Yeah. <laughs> what a blood bank. Um, yeah. right. I love how all our brains went to completely different things. Mm. But yeah, if I couldn't choose, like, Elijah and that, I would, like, if I got to choose all of them, Elijah would still be one of them. Or, it, depending on, obviously, how things went in life, mm. even with the other two, which would be either Aaron or um, Ed, depending on, <laughs> depending on, yeah, responsibility. Depending on what the fuck happens. <laughs> well, because they've been in my life the longest, and yeah. they've supported mm. me the most. And well, I've seen you through triumph and misery. They mm. have, and like, you know, for example, like, I call Aaron my sister, but she's helped me through a lot, even though I never really kind of fully opened up to her until very recently, where like, Ed's been my only person I opened up to for a long time, mm -hmm. for like, you know, seven years, until very recent did I start opening up to other people. Mm. And so he's helped me through a lot mentally. I know as soon as he'll hear this, he'll be like, see, I told you I was helpful. And I know him, it's depressing. <laughs> Don't let him listen. Oh, um, no, he, he does. <laughs> he will. Um, but you know, like, I'm very thankful for both of them. And so if I couldn't have them as godparents, this is again, they would Way be in the, the auntie and uncle that's they, not blood. Yeah, they would be like, I feel like besides like our, the parents, obviously, like my parents and whoever I'm married to's parents, they would be like the first to hold the kid. Mm. Because I want that as like a set thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They both just have one hand on the child <laughs> at the same time. Trade. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that would be something. It just, because they mean a lot. So, yay, sappy shit to end the podcast with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so thank you all for coming to the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> so, thanks for like, listening. Yeah, you know? thanks for like joining. <laughs> oh my god. But no, thank you, Alyssa and Kaylin, for coming on, and thank you, Dakota, again, for co hosting with me. I didn't do much, but I'm, I'm very happy to be You're here. Very <laughs> we spirit. We yeah. went off on a lot of tangents. Yes, we very much decluttered and, um, I don't know, just talked about random shit, so um, hopefully you guys don't mind that. Dice. Because <laughs> that happens a lot on this channel, so. It does, yes. Are you having fun playing with your dice? Oh my god. <laughs> the last you've been My dice! I'm not touching the dice. But... My dice! Anyway, let's wrap it up. Who bought you the jar to put the dice in? Put it down. <laughs> put it down. But yes. Do not mack away. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you all so much. We will see you in here with the next podcast. Until then. Podcast. Podcast. Why are you going to be so mean to me? Right? Until <laughs> then. <laughs> Until then. Yeah. See you later, guys. Yes, stay safe. We love you all. Bye. Bye. Robert, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> 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 Thank you.